Hi, it's DeWire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is May 11th, 2021. Let's talk the super middleweight division. Behind me is part of the poster for one of the glorious moments in this division's history, 168 pounds. Um, let's talk about Canelo. A champion with multiple belts in the division right now who wants to become undisputed so he's fighting another champion this one's unbeaten Caleb Plant if the parties can agree to a contract let's talk about it but first remember the opinion you should follow should be your own just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online now look, Canelo's a great fighter. I'm not here to say otherwise. He's on a historical run. This is like Sherman's March, right? A guy announces that he wants to be undisputed in a division. And then he starts taking out champions in the division, right? He's not just talk. He's actually fighting the fights. And he's winning in dramatic fashion, right? The Callum Smith fight. I'm sure Smith's corner knows that they lost that fight by several rounds. Smith, going into the fight, unbeaten fighter. The Billy Joe Saunders fight. Let's face it, Billy Joe was unbeaten going into the fight. Had won some big matches in the past. Billy Joe retires after having his face bones broken in three places. Right, folks? He couldn't have continued. You know, it's easy for fans in the cheap seats to say, oh, he quit in the fight. Look, this is a sport. When three of your facial bones get broken, it's time to call it a day. He would have been foolish to continue. Right? But just understand, such is the power of Canelo. He's picking up titles in a new division, one after the other, and he's doing it in emphatic form. Understand, Callum Smith, big time front foot, heavy punch guy. Against Canelo, he's on his back foot. After the fight, we're hearing that he had an injury. Right? Canelo turns you into something you're not. Right? Guys who are bold, are brave, are fearless, as they call Billy Joe Saunders, end up retiring due to injury. Right? It's very hard to question Canelo's accomplishments. When the guy is insistent upon fighting, the Golovkins, the Laras, the Kovalevs, the Smiths, the Saunders is, and now the Caleb Plants of the world, right? This is a remarkable time for boxing. A great fighter insisting on doing great things, right? Canelo's so dominant that his fight against Rocky Fielding, another champ at 168, was in a sense his easy fight in this stretch. Well, as great as Canelo is, we're gamblers. The odds matter. Right now, let me just say this diplomatically. I believe the best heavyweight on the planet is Tyson Fury. I don't view the Tyson Fury Anthony Joshua fight as that close a fight. I think Fury is a historical heavyweight. I think Fury belongs in the ring against the Lennox Lewis's and the Ali's of the world. Right? I think that's a different place. Not against Anthony Joshua, who's a great champ now, but to me isn't historical. I know many of you disagree with me. That's why we're meeting in this forum, to exchange our views. Right? You can tell me I'm crazy. I can tell you that you're overrating a fighter. Okay, fine. 
But understand, as much as I like Tyson Fury, I want you to compare the odds for Fury Joshua to the odds for Canelo Caleb Plant or the odds for Canelo Billy Joe Saunders. I know Canelo's delivering, right? He's like the mailman. He delivers. But understand, his odds are so out of whack that if I were forced to lay those odds in a Tyson Fury fight, I would not. Right? If, if you're laying the huge odds that you are in the Canelo fight, well, hell, I, I take Anthony Joshua then. Right? If you're going to give me 5 to 1 odds and ridiculous odds like that, and I know some of you got those odds in the Billy Joe Saunders fight, well, hell, I'll take the guy who I think might lose and then try to hedge the play some way so I win if there's an upset or if my guy loses. So, as dominant as Canelo has been, and he has been dominant, Right, Billy Joe Saunders in pre-fight interviews listed a list of British fighters that Canelo had beaten. Right, folks, they're, they're lists now. Canelo literally is just invading and running through the fighters of different countries. As dominant as he's been, and he only has one loss to Floyd Mayweather, officially. Canelo's overrated. Right, I'm sorry, a guy can't be going off in a competitive sport like boxing against other fighters who themselves have belts, who themselves are unbeaten, who themselves have faced big opponents. Right, Canelo cannot be going off at plus 600, excuse me, minus 600, in other words, the casino is telling you these two guys fought seven times. Canelo would win six of the seven. Or minus 500. Right? I don't believe that if Canelo fought Caleb Plant six times, Canelo would win five of the six. Right? We have to start talking about probabilities. Folks, life is not absolute. Right? On some nights, a Buster Douglas is going to beat a Mike Tyson. That's the reality of the sport. The sport has upsets. So, it's clear to me, and I make this video really as Canelo's enjoying the glow of a dominant performance against Billy Joe Saunders. Well, not performance, outcome. Right? I thought Saunders was winning the fight at the time of the stoppage. I understand many people disagree. I encourage people to read the post-fight comments of Saunders' trainer. Saunders' corner thought he had found a rhythm. On the the zone live broadcast Roy Jones Jr. thought Saunders had found a rhythm Chris Mannix had Saunders winning the fight well let me just say as we bask in the glow of Canelo beating Saunders right Saunders retires Canelo won the fight right Canelo didn't run in the fight Canelo's there throwing big punches in the pocket As I make this video, I understand Canelo's star shines brightly. I understand at a time when most states in the United States don't allow crowds to gather, at a time where people went to this fight wearing masks, several people in the crowd are wearing masks, Canelo was able to pull more than 70,000 people to his fight. Right? This is in a pandemic age. Right? Canelo pulls more than 70,000 people to the fight. He shatters the American indoor record for a fight crowd that Ali and Leon Spinks had held since the 1970s. Canelo wasn't even alive when the record was set. 
So no doubt, Canelo is doing some incredible things. But let me just say, at the odds that are being posted online at some of these online gambling hubs for the Canelo Billy Joe, excuse me, the Canelo Caleb Plant fight, I believe the first play you need to make, and you need to build a betting portfolio here. But the purpose of this video is to say that the odds are ridiculous right now. The value is on the Caleb Plant side of the ledger. Now, I know many of you feel I have an axe to grind with Canelo, just like many of you feel I have an axe to grind with Anthony Joshua. Right, folks, I don't. I'm just looking for betting opportunities. Understand, I made money, as incredible as that is to sound, on the Canelo-Billy Joe Saunders fight. When the odds are out of whack, you get to hedge the play. So let me just point out, Caleb Plant unbeaten as a pro. Unbeaten. Moves a lot better than Canelo. Has the benefit of seeing the mistakes that Billy Joe Saunders made in his fight against Canelo. Right? Khaled Plant now knows, for example, he can't let a pocket form. He knows that. He knows that he can't bend his head into the pocket. That if he tries to bend into the pocket, Canelo's going to be throwing uppercuts. He knows that one of Canelo's strategies is going to be to take away his body early. Right? Canelo might not headhunt the first half of the fight. He might be throwing a lot of body shots, hoping to slow down an opponent. I believe Khaled Plan also knows he can't trust the judges. I know mainstream press, a lot of people disagree with me. I thought the scoring of the Billy Joe Saunders fight was an atrocity. Right? If you have a round that's a slow round, then score it 10-10. Right? Slow rounds, every slow round can't go to Canelo. I can't watch a fight that's competitive that Chris Mannix, who scores a lot of fights on his own, has Saunders winning and then hear afterwards that the judges gave Saunders two or three rounds. That's ridiculous. Right? Simply ridiculous. So if I'm Caleb Plant, I understand the dilemma I have. It's hard to knock out Canelo. Canelo's never been KO'd. Right? Canelo's going to be the puncher in the fight. And winning over the judges is going to be extremely difficult because Canelo really enters the ring with something like a two-round advantage, right? He's very popular. He is a guy who pulls in a crowd and is able to identify with the crowd, right? Canelo is a guy who, when he's on his way into the ring, he has a band playing, and then he makes it a point before he walks into the ring. This is one of the biggest names in boxing. He makes it a point to shake the dancer's hands and to tap the singer to let the performers know how grateful he is to have them there, right? I, I was watching Canelo after the fight and there's a moment that got to me. Now, I'm a child of the 1980s and Canelo after beating Billy Joe Saunders, is hanging around the ring and he starts going around shaking hands and he walks up to Julio Cesar Chavez. And if you're a child of the 1980s, you understand this is boxing royalty, right? It's like talking about Alexis Arguello, right? Chavez is as big a name 
of the 1980s as anybody, quite frankly. Mike Tyson, whoever from that era. And Canelo shakes his hand, and Chavez has a lot to say to Canelo. So Chavez starts talking to Canelo. And Canelo, who's busy shaking hands, stops and listens to him. Right? And you're just looking at him and you're saying, wow, you know, this guy either is extremely humble or knows how to look humble. Right? This guy is one of those rare athletes who, in the moment of his success, understands that others have been successful before him, that he owes his career to the fans, his supporters. You're up against a statesman. You're up against a boxing ambassador. Caleb Plant needs to realize he can't win that battle. Right? Canelo has too much goodwill. I can tell you I listened to my share of sports radio and people were talking about the fight and on multiple shows folks had a hard time remembering Billy Joe Saunders' name. Right? Everyone viewed the fight as Canelo's latest fight. Canelo was the draw. He's the A side. There is no B side. There is no C side. There is no D side. So Khaled Plant has to realize for all the success and support he has on the global boxing stage, even though he's a champion unbeaten and his title's at stake, he has to realize that he's viewed as the opponent. That Canelo is the hometown fighter wherever they fight, especially Especially if the fight takes place in Texas. Understand, his fight against Billy Joe Saunders was such a success. Right? They showed Jerry Jones, and Jones looked surprised. The guy who owned the stadium, he looked surprised and overwhelmed by how packed the stadium was and how festive the stadium was. I'm guessing when sites bid for Canelo fights, there's a long line of the most prestigious sites in the United States in the bidding. Madison Square Garden, Cowboy Stadium, uh, T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. So Caleb Plant needs to understand that he's fighting a statesman. He's fighting one of the favorite sons of the sport. He can't start the fight strategically, like Billy Joe Saunders did, standing right in front of Canelo, trying to read Canelo. Folks, that has to be secondary. You have to fight, you have to start the fight fast. You have to come out, you can't be too technical about it. You have to come out and you have to say to yourself, I've got to out throw this guy. I've got to pump a jab. I've got to move and highlight what I'm doing for the crowd. I cannot get caught up in being in the pocket, staring down Canelo, playing chess. At the end of the first three rounds, people have to say, well, Saunders has been the more active fighter, or Caleb Plant has been the more active fighter. There can't be a doubt on that. You need to take the crowd out of the fight early. Now, let me say this. I personally felt that Saunders had a better shot of beating Canelo than Caleb Plant. Right? Saunders, after all, has more big fight experience. Right? Fought Andy Lee, fought Eubank. Um, you know, Saunders had been in the public light a very long time. He was a 2008 Olympian, uh, fought David Lemieux. I don't believe Caleb Plant has his level of experience. But what Plant has is a better best punch than Saunders. 
right? It's plant's secret. It's something you need to know about. The best film I've seen of it is Plant's fight against Mike Lee. Right? Plant is very fast. Plant has a devastating left hook. You've heard me call Floyd Mayweather's left hook hair trigger. I'm just telling you I believe Canelo's best punch is his left hook. Plant has a hair trigger left hook. It's sudden. It's devastating. I've been here online talking about how Plant might be inverted. His left is that much better than his right hand. Right now the problem is, in my opinion, Plant's right hand. Right? Because Canelo is what I call a technician. What a technician is, is he's a guy with a plan. He's a guy with a series of plans. Plan A, Plan B, Plan C, Plan D. He's not going to come out like I'm suggesting, Plant come out, and just try to outthrow Canelo for the first few rounds. Right? Just to get the judges out of the pattern of being preconditioned to vote for Canelo. No, a technician is different. Right? Canelo's constantly assessing the odds. Whatever he does well, he's constantly calibrating it against what he sees. He's pursuing the path of least resistance. He's making adjustments. So the Canelo you see in round one is not the Canelo you see in round four. Right? Canelo is like one man well Marquez, where I believe the sport slows down for him. He's making a mental note. He's like a computer. He's making a mental note of what you're throwing. He's going to enter this fight knowing all about Caleb Plant's left hook. Right? He's not going to be, as Billy Joe Saunders says, in the moment. Rather, this is a guy who's going to have plants. He's going to say, okay, plants over on this side, throwing his left hook. Here are the three things I'm going to do. Right? If plant changes his strategy, Canelo's going to have already three techniques that he's going to use. Right? I expect Canelo to be over on plant's right side to stay away from plant's left hook. Right? Canelo is better defensively than people realize. Right, He has his hands up and stuff. I know Canelo is going to be prepared to counter plant to the body. Right, You know these things are going to happen. So what plant has to do is he has to be a bit random. Since Canelo is looking for pattern recognition... Plant has to have a plan where he is changing the script enough where there isn't a recognizable pattern. So I think this fight is going to have far more movement. Far more movement than the Saunders fight. I'm expecting Plant to start much faster than Saunders did. I'm expecting Plant to bring the crowd into the fight because Plant himself is a bit of a showman. Right? I haven't seen the props that they're offering for this fight. It's still too early. They haven't signed the contracts yet. So I can't rec make a recommendation on props. I do expect this fight to go a few rounds. But the purpose of this video is to just make the argument that the odds right now are so skewed in part because Canelo's win over Saunders is so recent that you need to grab Plant simply to win at the plus 500 to plus 600 they're offering right here just so you lock in that part of the bet. Understand? Plant is unbeaten. 
Understand he's fought heavy punchers. Uskadege. I encourage people to look at that fight and how Plant was able to move around. Right? Plant does move significantly better than Canelo. I thought Billy Joe Saunders got in a rhythm in the middle rounds against Canelo. Right? I think if Plant can figure out a way to be on his back foot, to move, to pivot away from the pocket, to hide his body so he's not getting hit in the body, he's not getting hit with counters, to emphasize the jab, understand, Plant fights orthodox. So that left hook is his front hand. So if he's popping the left jab, and Canelo makes an adjustment. Then Plant can turn that jab into a hook. You understand, to catch Canelo. Let me also say this too. This is a Rocky Marciano move. We're gonna go back to the 50s. I noticed that when a guy has his hands up, many boxers don't throw punches. Right? The idea is, oh, Canelo has his hands up. He has my punches blocked. Right? That's the idea. You know, Rocky Marciano didn't believe that. Look at Marciano's fights against Archie Moore, for example. When you had your hands up, Rocky Marciano would continue to hit your hands. Right? There are even people who say when a guy has his hands up, that's your best chance to hit his bicep because that's supposed to slow down the guy's punching ability with that hand. Now my point to you is you're fighting Canelo. Canelo is good defensively. Canelo has a mobile hand. Canelo also raises his hands. He doesn't just rely on movement. My point is when Canelo raises his hands, you've got to punch his gloves. You've got to... <laughs> You've got to show the judges that you're the active fighter. So if Canelo's hands are up like this, rather than take the Saunders low volume approach, that's when you should double and triple the jab. Because sometimes you hit a guy with a jab and he has his hands up. If the guy's planning on countering you, which is what Canelo does a lot of the time, then the guy's waiting for you to throw, then he opens up, that double jab might catch the guy as he's opening up to throw a counter. I believe Caleb Plant has to pump the jab religiously. I believe the first three rounds are crucial because Canelo is such a judge favorite. If you sleepwalk through the first four rounds and it's 2-2, two -two in the real world. Well, you can rest assured on some judges' scorecard, it's 3-1 Canelo. You're already behind in the fight. Underdogs against Canelo, who's at the peak of his popularity, who just pulled 70-odd thousand during a pandemic. Right? If you're down on the scorecards against Canelo, you have no chance. Right? I believe Caleb Plant has to look at the films. Caleb Plant, you know, Canelo certainly is going to try to be away from Caleb Plant's left hook. Plant knows that already. Let me point out, too, that Plant wants to be so episodic that he can jump in the pocket and throw uppercuts. If Canelo is on his front foot hunting him, like he was hunting Callum Smith, look at that fight, right? Ask yourself how many times in that fight is Canelo on his back foot? So if Canelo's on his front foot, Caleb Plant needs to just flash in the pocket. He needs to pot shot, right? He needs to jab and pot shot. He can't linger in the pocket. So he needs to have some punches, like an uppercut, right? I see Canelo with his hands like this, guarding his sides. I think Canelo's open for an uppercut. Plant needs to practice a technique where he can just 
jump in the pocket, throw an uppercut, and then get out of the pocket. Let me also say, too, the last Billy Joe Saunders fight, uh, punch, where Saunders throws the right hand, Canelo leans back, right hand misses, Saunders is then naked in the pocket. What Caleb Plant has to do in those situations is make sure he's out of the pocket. So if he throws the right hand, he needs to make sure that when he throws the right hand, he lets it lead him out of the pocket. So Canelo can't then load up and hit him defenseless in the pocket. So he needs techniques where he throws punches that take him away from the pocket. Just like in the Billy Joe Saunders fight, I think it's doable. As much as I love Canelo's work, I don't believe in this competitive sport, and folks, it's very competitive, division after division. Right? Think 147. Um, Terrence Crawford, is arguably the best fighter in the sport pound for pound. He's certainly on the short list with Canelo, right? And you look at that division and you say, wow, well, would Crawford beat Errol Spence? Would Crawford beat Manny Pacquiao? As good as those three guys are, none of them should be going off as a minus 600 or minus 500 favorite. But yet, that's what Canelo's going off at against champs at 168. That's a casino mispricing. You need to lock in Caleb Plant to win right here. We'll talk about the props in other videos. That's how I see it. By the way, Plant's left hook is so good that Mike Lee fight ends by stoppage. And let me point out too, I made a pre-fight video on that fight and I thought Mike Lee who was a huge underdog, was going to be able to just crash the pocket on Caleb Plant. Right? I was wrong. Caleb Plant dusted him off early. Don't sleep on the idea of Plant landing that left hook and significantly hurting Canelo. Based on the information available, I'm going to take Caleb Plant to win the fight at the long odds being offered right now. And by long odds, if you're getting a plus 400 or higher on Caleb Plant, you need to lock that in right now with an idea that as the lines adjust, we're going to make a hedge bet to carry us if Canelo wins the way we think he might. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by. Let me also point out this Calzaghi-Kessler fight. Calzaghi doesn't solve the riddle until the middle of the fight. Right? Just food for thought. Caleb Plant has to set it up where Canelo can't solve the riddle at all or until the second half of the fight, right? Let's remember this fight behind me ended up going the distance. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.